Hi, thanks for looking in, thanks for watching. This is my Sony TC270 vintage tape recorder that I got uh, off eBay uh, a while ago. I haven't used one of these for quite a long time, but someone taught me how to do it back in the day, and I've forgotten loads of it, but I'm, I'm enjoying getting back in touch with it. Um, basically, uh, this came up because my old computer is on its last legs and it's full of my songs and I'm, I'm fed up of sort of moving my songs to another computer format or putting them somewhere else and, you know, basically putting them somewhere where I won't be able to listen to them if anything goes wrong with the computer. And as we know, things do still go wrong with computers. So I've been buying up these vintage tapes when I can. Sometimes you can get them cheap, sometimes not. Um, and you never know what kind of condition they're going to be in, but I'm quite pleased with this one. It's, uh, it's BASF. It actually looks like possibly mid to late 1960s. If you can see the, uh, the logo on there. Um, I'll try and sort of zoom, well, no, I can't, because it's stuck on the tripod and there's no zoom thing with the camera. This is the uh, the library box it came in. Can you see the BASF there? Uh, that, that's the old kind of old-fashioned writing. Somewhere down here, I've got a newer BASF tape. Pull that out. Yeah, and that, that, that's the newer kind of writing on there. I see the difference and I would associate that newer one with about the mid 1970s which was you know that, that, that those were the tapes people were buying sort of in the heyday of this when I was uh, when I was doing it myself anyway right these tapes come and sometimes they've got something very good on it like one of them came with really nice classical music and a very good recording of it as well and I kept it because I actually do quite uh, quite enjoy listening to it I, I listened to it several times and thought right hang on to this one uh, but this one I'm going to blank, um, it doesn't seem to contain anything in particular. And I've had some fun with it already, which I made a video of, and then my, my computer lost the video, which is also the part of why I'm doing this in the first place. Um, it had been wound onto the spool inside out, which I, I can't imagine how that would happen in normal, uh, normal use of a tape recorder, but it had been anyway. It had been wound on inside out, so uh, even after I'd sort of played around with it, it still it sort of recorded, but it sounded as if I was a very long way away. So what I really wanted was a bulk eraser, and they are fabulously expensive, but what, what isn't at all expensive is these rare earth magnets, and this one looks like to me about probably about three-eighths of an inch, certainly over a quarter inch, and it's it's quarter inch tape that we want to blank with it. And I thought maybe I could f find a way of putting it temporarily into the tape path here, into the uh, the transport, so that, you know, then I could wind a tape over it and it would blank the tape as it went. Um, but, I'd, you know, I'd, I just decided against that. There's nowhere that I could mount it in there where it wouldn't be much too close to the uh, the heads, and I don't know what effect it would have on them. So instead, I decided to add a bit to the tape path, um, and it, it's a bit that you would actually hold in your hand, and I'll, I'll show you how it goes as we go along. Um, I'm pretty sure anyone could make this. Probably not everyone would have these exact things to hand but everyone should have something like it you would need perhaps a bit of wood uh, this is actually a bit of perspex you might have a bit of thick plastic you could use and i've just cut that down that's probably about oh, about that's probably about let me see um a bit over a half an inch wide put it that way and uh, i'm also going to use this uh, this again is something that not everybody will have but everyone will have something a bit like it it's um Basically, it's a brass pin for the purposes of this. We need a nice smooth metal pin that the tape can glide over without getting scratched. And this is the empty case of um, a bullet that a friend of mine fired at a small bore shooting club. Uh, so I found a drill, the exact same size, made a hole through that so it sticks in perfectly. And I also countersunk it countersunk the hole in there so that the flange of the bullet wouldn't stick out the back. And I've actually pushed it a bit further down. It's it's further down in the hole than flush, if you can see there. Um, because the next thing I'm going to do, if I, oh, there it is, if I can find this, which I have, is just take off a little bit of blue tack. I don't know what you would call this anywhere else but UK. I only know the, the UK name for it, blue tack. Um, basically, it's sticky putty stuff that you can use again and again. You can stick pictures up on the wall with it and everything. And I've stuck it on the back there now. To hold the, the the brass pin in, see the the back the back of the bullet pin thing is in there. I stuck that on, and that will actually make it a bit tacky because what I'm going to end up doing is holding. 
just take a bit of that off there. Holding it like this, I'm going to fix this magnet into it in a second so that as the tape comes into the tape path it goes over this and the magnet blanks it. I've tried it before, it works nicely, doesn't seem to damage the tape or anything. But there is one problem with it, um, actually you have to watch it, you can't just sort of leave it there, which I hoped I'd be able to. Because uh, once this angle, or well, this angle, for if, if I had it there where I had it a minute ago, that angle gets to a certain point like this, it tries to snatch it. Um, and the same thing happens then on this side when you go in the other way. So you have to stop and put it on the other side and you have to watch very carefully because that, that really would mangle the tape. What I'm going to do now is stick this on and we want the gap of between, it says, between one and three millimetres in all the things I've looked at. Um, and I'm afraid I'm just going to guess that. The only thing I've got that would fit in there is a metal ruler. And I tried that last time, but uh, every time I withdraw the metal ruler so I can actually use the thing. Excuse me while I just fiddle with this tack a minute because it's not quite working. Every time I pull the ruler out, it pulls the magnet out with it. So uh, that just wasn't going to work. Okay, I've got... Oh, that's a bit big gap. Let's make that down. I think, actually, I think a credit card would be a good thing to gap this with. But experience has taught me, because I've made several of these, that I think that's going to be about right. I don't know if you can see it in there. But as the tape passes through that gap, the magnet should erase it. That word should. Let's see if it actually does. So I'm going to prop it there. Spring up the tape to activate the activator thing. Keep a hand on this so it's not buckling the tape and I'm not pulling it out of the tape path either, it's still flat against these. So, well it runs in forward, let's put it in fast forward. There we are. And I shall turn, the, we'll just pull that back a little bit actually, because the brakes need sorting out on this reel. It's a little bit sloppy, but that looks good now. It's coming over the pin. I'm sure that's blanking it nicely. Right, I'll be back in a minute when it's nearly done and we'll see what's happened. And it's at about this point here that I like to stop and change sides because this angle is becoming quite steep now. And it seems to put a stress on the tape. If I wasn't holding it there, it would probably snatch. And I don't want to risk that because uh, you know, these tapes, you know, the, the tape can take a snatch, but you can't take too many snatches. And it will always leave something there that shows. Okay, now that that's gone through the, to that point already has already been erased, so I'm pretty sure that's okay. So I'll just go through the motions again, take up the slack. Oh, now I forgot, we have to move that a bit so that the lever will go over it. In the fast forward and we're away. Okay. And there it is, I've done it now. Another quick look at the bulk eraser sideways on. You know, if you can drill a hole in a bit of wood that's exactly the same size as a metal pin you've got, uh, you, you shouldn't have too much trouble doing that. Uh, ma these magnets aren't too hard to find. Sometimes you can, you know, dismantle them out of something. Sometimes not so. I mean, I've done somewhere I've got some... Uh, Magnetic earrings that are my daughter's and uh, the little they've got tiny little rare earth magnets which do actually work. I dropped one inside the transport at one point when I was experimenting with this and I couldn't find it anywhere. And of course it had clung to the first metal thing it, it came near because they're such strong magnets. And it was stuck on just behind this post here where the trans transport begins. I couldn't, I just couldn't see it anywhere. I put my glasses on, I looked with a torch, I had the front off, looked down inside, couldn't see it anywhere. Um, put my tape on to see if it still works, and after about 20 seconds, I realised that the tape wasn't going to come on and there, there was nothing there. So I stopped and investigated, and I'd lost that time off the beginning of my Pink Floyd tape because this, uh, this magnet had in fact bulk erased everything that had gone past it. So I managed to get it out, but do be careful if you're doing this because the last thing you want to do with a magnetic recording device is drop anything that's a magnet down here. Uh, that, that's really uh, another big reason for opting for going outside of the actual tape transport and doing it from here or here where it can't fall inside. Also, you know, of course, be gentle with it. You don't want to, to, uh, to do anything that, that jeopardises the long terms of the future of the machine. Because this is uh, what, it's about 1974, maybe, this model. I'm not sure, really. Uh, sometime in the 1970s. I remember 
drooling over machines like this. So it's just about the smallest one they did. It was very expensive at the time. So let's just play a bit back. And you see it's nice and blank. I'll turn the volume right up. Left and right. You can turn the speakers to halfway down and off as well if you're recording something and you don't want feedback. As you can see, that's blanked it, and that will actually work as a tape now, which uh, I think is rather good because it was very cheap. Um, I've paid as much as uh, £10 and free postage for a 7-inch reel like this on eBay. Uh, this is actually one of five that I got for £11, including postage. So I was pleased about that. That is probably about 8 or $9 at today's exchange rate. I'm, I'm really not sure about that because it varies all the time. And who knows when it is that you're actually going to be listening to this. But thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and then you will be in touch when I do more and more stuff about reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders and actually have some music in the background and stuff. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.